today's video, excuse the red face, I've literally just got off them and also my dirty handprints on my hat, oops. Um, but we're going to do a day in the life of an equestrian photographer, equine photographer, I don't know. Um, so this is at the end of the day, I've just ridden him, he's just munching, munching away. Um, but I hope you enjoy this video, it's a bit different, but I also didn't know what to film this week and I got back to work after uh, lockdown, so just thought I'd try this and see what you think really. So yeah, let's go into the so video. So my day starts at 10am, well my day doesn't start, that's when the show starts, so obviously I'm up a good bit earlier. Um, today, the Sunday, was dressage, uh, it had been show jumping the day before and a derby on Friday night. So just to let you all know, I was absolutely freezing. Uh, this was my current setup. So I've decided to put some clips in of the nice sunny Friday night derby. Um, on Sunday, it was just blowing a gale. It didn't really w uh, rain, but just thought the, the Friday scenes were cuter. Then if you know, you know, gonna get my uh, breakfast at like two o'clock before we head off to Merino. Uh, the breakfast would consist of horseshoe chips, which are better than any other chips. So I got up to the yard and my stable was actually done very kindly. Um, I'm still not sure why, but I appreciated it. Uh, it just wasn't as neat as I would like. So I did a quick little tidy up, brushed up and everything. Um, and then put everything away just before going to get Merino. Um, I did appreciate my stable being done, obviously, but I am just a freak with how I do it. <laughs> so next is getting his hay and haylage in. He gets one slice of hay and then half a wheelbarrow of haylage which was sealed and I hate opening them, really, really hate opening the bales, but sucked it up, did it, put that in a stable ready for when he comes in uh, and then go and get the grumpy old man. He does not like the wind whatsoever. He really, really hates the wind. So he was not very happy. And then the yard owner got this new statue, which he would not go near for about 10 minutes. Um, He was snorting at it. He wouldn't go past that little gate. It was a whole dilemma. He had to get bribed with treats to even stand near it. Um, and even when he did stand, he was still very, very alert. <laughs> so Marino then gets his little lunge um, before being ridden. Today, because of the wind, I wasn't sure if I was going to ride because usually the wind and Marino just don't go together. Um, he'll buck, he'll rear, he'll bolt, take off. The whole lot, you name it, he will do it. Um, any slight noise or movement and we are halfway across the country in about 0.2 seconds flat. So usually I wouldn't ride because there's just no point putting yourself at risk when you know that's going to happen. Um, but today when I was lunging him, you can tell there's like no energy. He um, didn't want to canter there. You can see me trying to make scurry noises with the whip, which had no effect. Um, he does canter in the end, but at this point I'm thinking... God, he's being a bit lazy today. Maybe I can ride. Um, I would rather him be lazy than do his massive fly box and drag me across the arena. Um, I would much prefer the laziness, actually. So I decided that I would ride. Um, obviously, he does get more of a warm up. He does loads of walk before he trots. And he does loads of trot before he canters, obviously. Um. Also, whenever I lunge, I just lunge him to a point where I feel like he's relaxed. Um, so he has subtle little signs. Obviously, everyone knows their own horse. Um, whenever he'll start to stretch a little bit and his trot will be a bit more flowy, um, that's when I'll stop lunging him. Now, this could be five minutes. It could be 15 minutes. Um, but I don't mind. Obviously, I would rather him be happy and comfortable before I get on. Um, and also, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, Marino does get lunged before I ride almost pretty much every time. Uh, this is because he is an older horse and the lunging just stretches out the weight carrying muscles in his back um, before I stick a saddle on and then stick my weight on top of that. Um, this is all done through chiropractor's advice. She sees him regularly and is very happy with them. And I think the lunging before riding has helped an incredible amount. You can really see a difference in him. Um, and obviously, if your horse is going to be so different in such a positive way, you will not mind putting those extra five, 15 minutes in at the start of the ride to get them going like that. So I just thought I would clear that up just in case anyone had any questions. You can see now he is starting to relax a little bit more so we don't do too much more lunging 
and then we go up we stick the saddle on and get ready to ride so once i'm on board um we obviously still do another warm-up um but today i went a little bit longer just to make sure he was 100 percent okay with the wind um because we do usually have a bit of a nervous breakdown so i just thought i would make 100 percent sure that he was all right um as you can probably guess the focus of today's ride was just to get him to relax because obviously if we go out um to a show and have to warm up and it's windy we can't just scrap the whole show um, and obviously in Ireland we're not exactly great with the weather so I just wanted to get him to relax Um, you can see at the start he was quite tense Um, if you look at little clips throughout this you can see me just reaching down and giving him a little pat a little rub on his neck so he knows he's all right Um, I am chatting away to him as if he's a human um <laughs> you would really you would laugh if you could hear our conversations so i mute them for a reason so i don't embarrass myself um but you can see here lots and lots and lots of turning changing the rain circles um n not on video there was some leg yielding uh, we usually would do some shouldering as well just a lot of things to get him bending and using himself a bit more um and you can see he's actually starting to relax quite quickly and drop his head a little bit um he does still get quite tense in parts um which is completely normal for merino anyway um and i was just so thrilled um especially with the weather that he was going this calmly and he was not fighting against my hand or anything he wasn't going over bent which sometimes he does have a tendency to do um just to try and make life easier for him i just have to push him on to get him out of it again um also as you can probably see our arena is absolutely massive um i always stay in the top half anyway um just because there's no point really um the arena is absolutely huge i don't need to use all of it um so i do stay at the top however today um just out of camera out of shot i think is the right word and um, you can see a bit of a, a barn where the cows are kept um now the way the door was kind of propped open we couldn't close it and we couldn't open it fully because there was things blocking it um, and it kept like slamming and making these really loud banging noises which wasn't only scurring me it was scurring merino as well so we decided just to try and keep it in this little area for today just because I didn't want anything to make this a bad experience for him. I wanted him to realise that the wind isn't actually that bad. Um, we have been working on our canter quite a lot recently. And I was literally close to tears um, this day. Because he usually would stick his head up in the air, stick his nose out. And he would fight against your hand in the canter. Um, and he didn't really have a good pace either. He would either barely canter or he would fly around um so with that i know he's not you know he's not like a grand prix dressage horse i know that but the fact that he's starting to drop his head down i was just so over the moon he is not a horse that likes to stretch <laughs> at all um also his transitions i was a bit weary of his transitions this day because i didn't put my spurs on with the wind because I uh, fancied my life this day so I was also aware that sometimes not all the time but sometimes he can be a little reluctant to move forward without my spurs um but I was actually really really happy with him um he didn't react any differently I did need to keep a bit more leg on obviously um that is the whole purpose of spurs but not enough where you know I was exhausted or my legs felt like they were going to fall off and you can also tell on this rain encounter he is a lot better he does get very tense kind of coming up the center line area because he's heading towards the walker which makes scurry noises in the wind and was also blowing itself round. so that was a little bit worrying for him bless him <laughs> and he also would get quite tense if he's um heading towards the arena um like across the middle um as if a, a b to e type area 
uh, because he's heading towards fields with horses in them. So he just sees other horses and wants to play. Um, but here you can tell he's really, really, really starting to just be a bit more soft. Um, he's starting to stretch down a little bit. I am in no way trying to, you know, pull his head in. I just want him to rela re relax him to relax on his own accord and realize that there's nothing scary um which is the story of marino's life really um this canter i was super happy with as well you can see that little bit of tension just as he's heading towards the bushes um in the middle of those bushes is filled with a horse in it um so he's just he was just so good you can see on the circles we do a lot of canter circles kind of leg yielding in and out on the circles uh, just to make sure he's still bending, still engaged. And we also would do a lot of downwards transitions, which you will now see because we're practicing our center line as well. Um, because he does just kind of, instead of riding into it, we kind of lose the battery and kind of saunter into our downwards transitions. But we do have a dressage booked. So he is in boot camp at the minute. We are... Working on our centre lines because I am shocking at them. I am so, so bad. Um, You can see here, I asked my dad if he was square. I forgot that my dad didn't know what square means. And my dad said yes. So I gave a massive big 